Hello and welcome back to Say Something Nice Reviews. It is my honor. Well, look at that. Honor was the word of the day. And speaking of honor, today we'll be looking at Dishonored 2. Was that a huge stretch for a joke? Yep. Dishonored 2 is, well, a sequel, obviously, and follow-up to the smash hit Dishonored, which released in 2012. This game comes to us from Arcane Studios, who are quickly on the rise with the Dishonored series and the impressive-looking game Prey, set to release next year. Fun fact, I also learned that they were tapped to work on Half-Life 2 Episode 4, and now I've made myself sad. Let's... Let's look at the game, whatever. Just want a new Half-Life! The first difference between the first Dishonored and this sequel happens almost immediately. This game is running in a new engine. The first game ran in Unreal 3, while this one displays the Void engine, which can handle much greater detail. Uh, and then the game starts. Why do we celebrate the anniversary of an assassination? So here we go, back in the city of Dunwall. This time the narration is done by a grown Emily Caldwin, who of course was the princess of the first game. She is now Empress of Dunwall, and is observing the anniversary of her mother's assassination. And there he is, the man who is mostly myth, Corvo Watano, Royal Protector, the protagonist of the first game, and Master Assassin. And immediately, this game does something great. See, in the first game, there were hints and clues that Emily was actually Corvo's daughter, but in this game, they just go ahead and show it up front, and they show that everyone has stopped pretending like they didn't already know. I mean, it was the worst kept secret we've done one. While on the throne, this company barges in, and having played the first game, I was like, oh shit, people are about to die. And guess what? I was right. Somehow, yet again, the Empress of Dunwall is attacked. Like, Corvo should have known better. Should be the top of his to-do list. Alright, let's see. Uh, yeah. Mm. Okay. No. Uh-huh. Oh, shit. A brief cutscene ensues until you're given this choice. Play as Corvo Otano, or play as Emily Caldwin. Since I beat the first game more than once, I wanted to try something new and went with Emily. Corvo was turned to stone and Emily knocked out, and so the fun begins as we start our quest to reclaim the throne again and save Corvo. So with that out of the way, let's get to the meat of this game, the stealth action. It feels just like the first game, but better in every way. If you're familiar with Dishonored 1, you'll feel at home with the control scheme and mechanics. You can climb, you can crouch, you can do non-lethal takedowns or stab people just all up in the neck. It's all there. But it feels better. The AI is improved and your character has a bit more weight, meaning that you have to carefully time your moves. I was worried that I'd have to shake off some rust and get used to the game again, but this opening escape sequence just brought it all back. I suddenly remembered where to lurk, how to move, and that thrill of hoping that you're just out of sight of that guard. Later you have the option to gain magical powers from the outsider, just like in the first game. Now you can deny him and play the whole game without any powers, but no thanks. One magics, please. It is here that Emily and Corvo split gameplay-wise. Corvo still has his trademark powers. You can blink to teleport, dark eyes to see through walls, stop time, and so on. They have been nerfed a bit though, because they did make the game a little too easy at full strength in Dishonored 1. But Emily has a different set of powers. She also has dark eyes, and she can simulate teleportation with the power called Far Reach, which is cooler than Blink, let's be honest. But after that, the similarities end. Emily can gain various new abilities that make the game interesting. She can create a clone of herself, create a magical distraction, she can shadow walk, becoming stealthier, and most usefully, she can link enemies, making it so that whatever happens to one enemy happens to the other. Now, I found her powers to be a bit more geared towards stealth than open assault than Corvo's. But again, as exciting as her powers are, they become a little too powerful once you upgrade them. She has an upgrade that allows her to use her far reach to pull enemies towards you, which can make certain situations lose any tension. This game does a better job of balancing its powers than its predecessor did though. Overall, you should find a difficulty level that challenges you, no matter what your playstyle is, which brings me to my favorite part of this game. Options. And lots of them. You can choose to play lethal, non-lethal, stealth, chaotic, whatever floats your boat. There's a variety in weapons, takedown methods, and usage of powers, but the best options are in your movement. 
Dishonored 2 carries on the tradition of large, interesting areas that allow you to traverse to and from targets in a variety of ways. Let's look at this little scenario. That wall of light will kill me if I try to walk through it. Now, I could try to find its power source to shut it off. I could find its control panel and try to rewire it so it hurts everyone else but me. And I could try to find a route over, under, around, you name it. And this is merely one section of one level. Most of these levels have three stages, making your way from the docks to the building which your target resides, taking down your target in that building, and making your way from that building back to the docks. And as always, it's an interesting trek. It's fun to explore and see the world building and steampunk design. And this is where Dishonored really shines and sets itself apart. It's a truly full and interesting world. Unfortunately, just like the first game, it has pacing issues. The game starts off slow. The first standout mission is the third mission of the game, and since missions can take a while to complete depending on how you play them, that could make for a very drawn out start. Dishonored 1 did this too, but as in that game, once the missions pick up, they get real damn interesting. Like this steampunk futuristic building with robot men, or this mission that involves time travel, including time stealth takedowns, and no, I'm not going to explain what's happening here, you'll just have to play it, but, well, the story is probably, yet again, the weakest part of this game. Just like the first game, the plot is pretty generic. Someone feels slighted, they want the throne, revenge, blah blah blah. Quite honestly, the setting and notes tell a far better story than the mainline one, although I will admit that it jumped quite a few sharks that caught me off guard. Shit gets nuts. It all leads to a couple possible endings based on how you play. It's passable, but it's not the draw for this game. The real world building comes from the information that you pick up in the game. Various books, notes, audiographs, and even posters all tell interesting stories about the world of Dishonored 2. There are even events happening separate from you in the game, like this fight between two different factions. Just like the first game, all of these extra aspects make the world feel full. It almost makes up for the pacing issue, since you want to learn more about the different cities, buildings, and people that you interact with. I could go on and on about this game, to be quite honest. The first Dishonored was one of my favorite games of the last generation, and this one is quickly becoming a favorite of mine too. It's not without its faults, the sound mixing made it seem like enemies were always right behind you which was annoying, and open combat is still mediocre, but damn if it's not fun to stalk around the city or wreak bloody vengeance, and it's great that you get to choose which of those you'd rather do. The adaptability and varied gameplay make this game stand out and live up to the hype. If you like the first Dishonored, you'll love this one. If you haven't played Dishonored, now's a great time to jump in. Fair warning though, if you're playing this on PC, the PC version was an absolute disaster at launch. So before you buy, I'd recommend you check to see if they patched or fixed that version. But on console, it ran well, and I highly recommend it. Dishonored 2 is very, very nice. Thank you for joining, and remember, as always, if you can't say anything nice, so meet me in the shadows, bring your sweetest greet. We'll slip on to a wailer, and maybe. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video. Uh, if you want to see more, please go ahead and subscribe. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the game. Have you played it? Do you want to play it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know. That's what we're here for, right? It's all a discussion. We all love video games, so just let me know. Uh, you can follow a couple of these links to other videos if you're interested. And um, thanks for watching. See you guys later.